people here recycle at home? Oh, good number. What kind of things do you recycle? Air Glass and cans. Glass and cans. Katie? We can have um, soda cans recycled. What do you recycle? Paper. Paper. You can recycle jugs of milk, the plastic ones. What about food? Can you recycle food? So what happens to your food after lunch in the cafeteria if you don't finish it all? What happens to it, Rachel? It goes to the garbage can. It goes to the garbage can. Yeah. It goes to the dump. goes to the dump. If you're like most Americans, you generate close to four and a half pounds of garbage every day. This adds up quickly. In the United States alone, we produce 222 million tons of garbage every year. As the population grows, so does the amount of garbage. The EPA estimates that by the year 2010, this country will have to deal with 265 million tons of trash annually. So where does this garbage go? Some of it gets incinerated, some gets recycled, but 60% ends up buried underground and covered with dirt in disposal sites known as landfills. For years, landfills have been the most popular waste disposal method, but time may be running out for this solution. Many landfills are filling up quickly, and new space is hard to find. In the U.S., and especially in countries with a smaller land mass, like Japan, governments have tried to burn the waste, but this solution is expensive and releases dioxin and other poisons into the air. We have to find other solutions for waste disposal. Even a medium-sized city can produce tons of trash every day, the largest component in a landfill is paper, followed by yard waste, glass, and metals. The next largest component is food waste, at roughly 11% of all waste generated. This food waste is an especially troublesome element of the landfill. As it starts to decay, it gives off odors, dangerous gases, and attracts rodents and other animals. We can't eliminate all the waste we generate, but we can all do our part to create less of it. We throw away 14 million tons of food every year. To put that into perspective, if you were to take all that and heap it up onto a football field, you'd have a pile 43 miles high. That's about six times the height of Mount Everest, the tallest mountain on Earth. Because of the way that landfill technology works, this material never has a chance to completely decompose. It's dumped on the ground and immediately plowed over. This deprives it of oxygen and the elements that would normally break it down. In fact, there are researchers who have studied landfills and they've reported finding a 20-year-old head of lettuce perfectly intact in the middle of a city dump. The real irony is that this garbage can actually become a valuable resource for gardeners and farmers throughout the world. When the waste is properly composted, it breaks down into a valuable organic soil additive that provides nutrients for crops and flower gardens. And that's why we're here today, to tell you about a special form of recycling that uses microorganisms. Microorganisms are tiny units of life, too small to be seen without a microscope. They're everywhere in nature, in the air, soil, ocean, rivers, animals, and even in the human body. When we hear the word microorganism, we usually think of the kind that are harmful, like the virus that gave you the flu last summer, or the bacteria that caused an infection or spoiled that food in the back of your fridge. Microorganisms are the reason mold builds up in a bathroom, or a trash can smells bad on a hot day. These not-so-friendly guys of the microbial world are called pathogens. However, the vast majority of microorganisms don't cause this kind of damage and in fact are crucial for sustaining life on Earth. This very friendly group is known as beneficial microorganisms and are responsible for balancing the Earth's ecological system and carrying out chemical processes that make life possible. In fact, without bacteria in our bodies, we wouldn't